Thanks for listening to The Spark, medical education for curious minds, where we bring you the latest ideas and insights from faculty, students, and staff in UCSF's medical education community. I'm Megan O'Connor, instructional designer with the Technology Enhanced Education Group. And I'm Karen Fleming, communications manager for the Office of Medical Education. This episode focuses on faculty excellence and professionalism in medical education. We'll hear from Associate Professor of Medicine, Dr. Stephanie Rinke, a recipient of this year's Maxine Papadakis Awards for Professionalism and Respect, which were presented during October's Teaching Awards Ceremony. The Maxine Papadakis Awards were newly created this year to recognize professionalism and mutual faculty learner respect in medical education. Dr. Papadakis, a former Associate Dean for Students, devoted considerable effort to measuring and improving the professionalism and respectful behavior of faculty in the learning environment. It was her work that led to the respect questions on the student evaluations of faculty. These questions ask every student to indicate the extent to which faculty treated them and others with courtesy and respect. We also talked to fourth-year medical student Anila McGinnis, who nominated another faculty member and recipient of a Maxine Papadakis Award, Dr. Jessica Apoku Anane. Let's go to the interview with Anila. So Anila, can you tell me why did you nominate Dr. Apoku Anane for the Maxine Papadakis Awards? I thought that Dr. Apoku Anane exemplified consistent respect for the students. You always felt as a student in her presence that she noticed you and that she was thinking about your experience. And I think she was very skilled at putting herself in the perspective of the learner, whether that was at the medical student level or even at the level of senior residents. Um, She was, I think, one of the faculty who who I thought was the best at using her words. Uh, She would, for example, say, turn your left hand counterclockwise 90 degrees and push point down towards the floor and push down with your right hand. And if you didn't understand that, then she would um, explain it again using very effective language. If you still don't understand, she would uh, show you. And then after she shows you, she would hand it back to you and let you try again. And I think that last part where she lets the learner try again um, is something that is honestly quite rare in the OR. Um, And I think that it was very considerate and I think it showed how much effort that Dr. Apokomunani puts into guiding learners. What does professionalism in medicine and in medical education mean to you? When we think about the things that we think as constituting professionalism, such as show up on time, be honest, dress well, be prepared, our motivations for doing all those things come down to um, showing respect for the other people in our setting, the other learners, the teachers, and everybody. And as long as you're putting an effort towards showing respect towards other people, you will act professionally. Why do you think it's important to cultivate a culture of mutual respect in the learning environment, so that being the classrooms and clinics? I would say that mutual respect is something that is a necessary conditioning for education to happen. If learners don't feel valued and respected, then learning won't happen. And if teachers don't feel valued and respected, then teaching will not happen. I'm going to ask you a two-part question, and that being, what does a positive learning environment mean for you in the School of Medicine? And second of all, how do you see that being exemplified here at UCSF? There are many factors that go into a positive learning environment, many factors that go into whether you're excited to go to your uh, clinical shift or your rotation that day. And I think the one that most people will discover is that the people are what determine what a positive learning environment is, um, how happy they, they feel around their team, the unique chemistry of personalities that makes people look forward to going to work each day. So I think that I felt the happiest and looked forward to going to work the most at times when my team has made a very intentional effort to make me feel like they expected me to show up, they weren't surprised to see a medical student present, that they welcomed questions, that they welcomed uh, contributions of a medical student, and that they uh, actively look for ways to make a medical student feel valuable. So what have you seen here at the School of Medicine in terms of its ability to cultivate a positive learning environment? Uh, I can think very clearly of specific people who have made me feel 
happy and uh, valued in whatever setting I was in or whatever role I was in. Uh, for example, on uh, trauma surgery, uh, one of the surgical attendings, who is well known to many people, uh, would play Beyonce in the OR, would look for learners and actively express his happiness that the learners were present in the room. He, um, if he sees a learner standing kind of farther back, he invites them to come closer to, if they're scrubbed in, to put their hands on the patient. And he's constantly making jokes and, he's, and expressing how happy he is to be doing what he's doing. Uh, one of the most common surgeries that we do um, uh, on the general surgery service is hernia repairs and they can be, since they're so common, they can seem very boring and mundane, but this attending uh, treats every hernia repair like it's the most exciting and what best thing that he can be doing with his day and that if a learner's present in the room, that's one of the best people who could be in the room and he never runs out of fun jokes to say, even if it's the joke he's you said many times before, he still says it as if it's the best joke ever, and I think that's really special and makes me want to show up as a learner um, to his OR, and it makes me look forward to being in his OR every time. Now that we've heard from Anila about the teaching style, approach to professionalism, and characteristics of clinical excellence that most inspired her this year, let's hear from faculty member Dr. Stephanie Ranke about how her team, as well as the clinical and teaching environment in which she works and practices, exemplifies professionalism and mutual respect. So I'm here with Dr. Stephanie Renke, Associate Clinical Pro Professor of Medicine and CMC Site Director for UCSF Health. Dr. Renke is also a coach for second and fourth year medical students. What are your thoughts on being awarded a Maxine Papadakis Award for Professionalism and Respect? And what does this award signify for you? Well, it's an incredible honor to have received this award. I was so touched by the words that the students, you know, the, the notes that the students had brought in terms of, you know, why they nominated me or why the student nominated me. And it really made me pause and think about um, what professionalism not only means to me, but what it means in the context of medical education. It really made me think about why this award um, is so important and what it really signifies not only to myself as a faculty member here at UCSF, but also to the greater population of faculty out there working hard here at UCSF, working with students, residents, um, graduate students, uh, and other professionals, um, and why it is so important to, you know, such an honor to have received this award, not why it's important to showcase it. Um, for me, it signifies um, that this is an important aspect of medical education that sometimes may get overlooked. I don't know if it is or not. It's hard to say. Um, but I do, uh, it, it really, like I said, it was an eye-opening kind of experience for me to have not only um, been awarded it, but to have me think and about what this means to me myself as a professional. Um, I remember years ago, and I, I couldn't even tell you when, I was at a national meeting and there was a faculty mentoring session. It was like a noontime session where you could meet faculty from other institutions. And I, was, I remember Dr. Pack, uh, Papadakis was there. And so I actually got an opportunity. I was probably in my second or third year of faculty here at UCSF. And I got a chance to meet and talk with her about her interests. And it was just an amazing experience for me to just sit down with her one on one and talk about what it's like to be on faculty here at UCSF. And it's interesting that um, I actually met her outside of UCSF at another at a national meeting. And that was an opportunity to meet with her. But I remember thinking even um, and that must have been seven or eight years ago, remembering what an impact she had on me and how she described the work that she'd done and the students and residents she'd worked with over the years. So that to me really resonated. And then of course, receiving this award was like, again, another moment to pause about what uh, professionalism means to me. And what inspires and rewards you most as a faculty member and a coach? There are a lot of things that 
um, inspires and rewards, that is rewarding for me. I think first and foremost is an opportunity to work with residents and students in the workplace and to really think about what's important. Um, number one being patient care and spending time and quality time with patients and their families. And because I'm a hospitalist, I my workplace is the hospital. And so having that opportunity to work with students and residents and really have an opportunity for them to see what it's like to be a professional in that particular workplace is very, very important to me. And it's very rewarding. Um, I think that uh, it's an opportunity also to talk about things that are important in, in professionalism, such as responsibility, thinking about, you know, what am I as a physician, how, what are my responsibilities as a physician, not only to my patients, but also to the system that I work in and to uh, improving that system. And then, you know, um, also thinking about it's incredibly, I find for me, it's incredibly important to demonstrate that things like transparency and honesty are very, very important. What advice would you give students new to the Bridges curriculum regarding professionalism in medicine? I think most importantly is um, to let students know that it's incredibly important to listen and learn from others. I think oftentimes when we start into a profession, we think our profession is the only profession that knows the way. And I think one of the, I think biggest eye-opening experiences for students coming into the bridges is actually getting an opportunity to not only observe but also work with other health professionals in um, in their microsystem, whether it's nurses, pharmacists, uh, chaplains, social workers. Um, patient care assistants uh, and nurse managers uh, or and other professionals it's incredibly it, it's, it's such a rich learning environment and so that's one of the pieces of advice I always give students coming in um, is to really you know not only look listen and learn but keep your your mind open to learning from others because one profession doesn't necessarily have all the answers um, and even though you've chosen to um, enter the field of medicine as a physician. There are so many other uh, individuals and systems that you can learn from, um, and so to really keep an open mind uh, as you go through the pro as you go through your training. How does your team, as well as the clinical and teaching environment in which you work and practice, exemplify professionalism and mutual respect? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I work in many different team with many different team dynamics. So I think even from day to day, that changes in the hospital. So I might be working with one individual one day and another individual in the same role another day. Um, and I think um, it's hard to say how you how we exemplify professionalism and mutual respect. But I think one of the most important things is to and that the, I find that the teams in the hospital. Um, because we don't necessarily work all together every single day, all the time, that we come into it again knowing that while I might be working with someone for one day, I'm going to be working with them for the, the next week or in two weeks or in a month and three months. And so it's really about getting to know the members of the team and having a greater goal. So having something in mind. So, you know, the purpose of our our relationship together as a team is to, you know, make the best possible, let's say, discharge plan for the patient or ensuring that that family meeting goes very well. And so really being upfront about setting expectations for what's going to happen. Um, and so that's one example, I think, in, particularly in the hospital where I find that that kind of team dynamic and setting expectations early, even though I know I'm not going to be working with the same team every day, being very, very um, uh, clear about what expectations are moving forward and setting those, set, so setting that up for success for not only our patients, our families, but also for ourselves as team members. It's been inspiring to learn about the work of this year's recipients of teaching awards recognizing faculty excellence in medical education.
We hope you've subscribed to The Spark. Stay tuned for more episodes starting in 2018 when we begin our second season after a short series break over the next two months. The music in this podcast comes from Pottington Bears Egress, licensed under CC by NC 3.0 and available at the Free Music Archive.